Hey everyone, today I want to put up my practical uh, experience in use and to just ask you what does it mean to you quality of sound. As we constantly listen to other performance they have a unique, very unusual and very specific sound that uh, sometimes even when we listen to Haifes or David Oistre who is teacher to my teacher of course uh, uh, listening to uh, Milstein uh, listening to Isaac Stern or Itzhak Pullman we can get this vibe of their unique sound uh, you probably will say, well, uh, of course they have uh, this uh, beautiful instrument, uh, violins uh, uh, like uh, uh, Stradivarius or Guarnerius, something. but let me tell you something. And I'm going to um, uh, say a story after uh, Yasha Hafez has died. Uh, there was this memorial concert in his honor, you know, and they, uh, his instrument was given to an, uh, a very good violin player to, to perform and the critique and a lot of people have said that the sound has nothing to do with what Yaisha Haifetz used to uh, bring out of this instrument. And um, honestly, I actually know one of the mentors that I uh, had the opportunity to take part in his master class uh, from LA Philharmonic is the one who uh, take care of uh, Nathan Milstein uh, instrument. And believe it or not, they're playing in their sounding. Uh, the sound is completely different. And so, in this regard, I'm asking everyone of it. You know, we say, oh, okay, uh, you put a little vibrato here, a little vibrato there, uh, stretch your finger here, press more here, MP of your pressure, I know, your bow, use your bow more, and okay, fine. But what define? What is it that define a beautiful sound, a quality of sound? And that's something that I'm going to work today in my practice. And uh, it's very interesting that actually the sound is, uh, there are people claiming, you know, oh, sound is always good. You know, uh, the way you play, the sound is always good. Uh, well, uh, the sound can be always beautiful. Uh, well, no, that's a wrong theory. First of all, the way you you tighten up your bow. However, uh, sound cannot be like. Uh, do you think it's a good sound? Well, it's a, not so bad, but is it a quality sound? Or is this a quality sound? Is this a quality sound? So, in the both ways that I played, neither of this we can say it's a good quality of sound. And you'll be shocked. Oh, wow, how come? And why? Here the secret is. And I'm going to start explain. Very, very, very simple way of, you know, doing this. This is Yasha Haifetz Killbo. Right? So guys, I'm gonna start with the, his first uh, scale, G major, G minor, you know, and make you feel the difference. And not only feel, but to understand the difference. And here we come. It starts all with the open strings. Look. You're gonna say, oh, it's an open string. Well, what is so important? What the important part is that we have to hear, you know, we have dividing the string. When we divide on a half, it's a, a octave and a 
two times the two octaves and a three and a three octaves, you see um, perfect fourth and fifth. So what we are supposed to hear when we have an open string is to at least maintain uh, equal sound. So if your sound from the bottom is too strong and in the middle and kind of fading, that's not a quality sound. Second, also is not quality of sound. Why? I'm putting too much pressure. So the speed should be equal to a certain sort of pressure. Right? How to maintain? Usually it says that qu a quarter note 70. Right? Is the perfect paste. So. you can do it a little slower like 50 a quarter of 50 however the idea is that when you put your finger on your string you are supposed to hear the overtones there is this overtone sometimes people say those are the 13 tones this legendary violin is in the past 13 tones so if you don't hear this your sound will be different like do, do it does make some acoustic uh, you know projection but is it the quality sound of this a no why it's not in the right place eh, it's a little too sharp so we have to go a little low Do you see the difference? Can you hear the difference? I actually can hear the overtone of its uh, um, you know, practical octave. That's what I'm talking about. Then. Now it's correct because I can hear F sharp, you know. Then. Are they clean and together? Yes. sharp string the open string is very important one of the legendary Henry van Thames uh, violinist says that uh, which uh, Yase was his student you know uh, says that he many times will tell his students play as much as possible open strings to why the open strings usually sounds ugly when you uh, maintain or make possible to correct the sound of an open string, you definitely will find the pressure and the speed for the rest of them. There is this like a steady middle part, like an axle. I'll just imagine this axle you know thickness in the tone that that vibrates 
constantly. You see? That's the quality tone. This E should be uh, remodeled. Here is the correct. You can hear the, the open string A start vibrates together with the stone. You can hear the sound. Another trick is when you play minor, lots of people, they tend to do it too flat. You know, ta -yo -yo. Uh, it's like gummy, I like, it's just like... So, have in mind, imaginary that when you are climbing a mountain up there, and let's just say that you have a, um, a card that you're pushing a card all the way up to so what do you do when you push up you know do you keep the card close to you no you put it on a uh, on a distance a little between like a larger or major distance so you can have the chance to pull it all the way up but when you go down when you descend from the top and trying to go down to the mountain do you keep the card down and you know, in a big distance uh, uh, of your body, from your body, no. You keep it closer. This way you regulate what the balance. Here we talk about the balance. So if I do it, and listen, when I go, uh, when I ascend, if I do it too flat, it will not sound right. <laughs> Does it sound right? High. Ah, oh, let me say hello. Oh, good. <laughs> so does it sound right? No. Because it's too flat and you have the feeling that the chord is too close to you. So we have to make a distance and look upon. We have to step over on the tongue, not to drag the tone. To drag ourselves onto the tone. So it's gonna be like descend. In the descending process often our fingers go too sharp and fast to go to the same positioning but there is a catch. 
we become what? Low, flat. So, do you remember when I told you that we have this imaginary car that we are driving down the hill, you know, and we descend from the top of the mountain, so we keep it, we're closer to our body, so it doesn't take us down. So it's the same. in mind, concentration in mind, I uh, tend to what? Have clean and clear octave and triads and scales. It's something like the quality of sound. It's a very hard opening to the concerto, uh, uh, Brook concerto, violin concerto. You know, why do we have this uh, open string, you know? And you hear lots of time uh, the pressure of our bow, we kind of tend to get tired. So it's a simple uh, scale, like let's just say we take the notes from uh, the scales, the scale book I just took from uh, Ayesha Haydn. So. so, do you remember in the very beginning I said that we have to feel the string has this axle tone that keeps the sound, the vibration, absolutely steady. That's, you know, some people put a vibrato on it. Well, I don't mind. Uh, it says ad libitum. I, I see it a little different. Uh, see it like a, a way of opening and more spacey than just put some sort of uh, expression. Vibrato is a form of expression, so don't overuse or overdo.
say, oh, it's flat, but it's actually the correct tone, right? Because from uh, G minor, we switch to E flat major, the third, you know, standing uh, over G. You see, the first time is... And the second time is... hits the chord and then so here it's, it says marcato but interesting fact we have to keep the quality of sound so remember we have to hear the thirteen tone, the overtones. Like Musicians, I mean, it's their interpretation, of course, the way they interpret this uh, moment. I strongly suggest this does not be cut off. No, it should be kept all the way through the end. The two G should be absolutely equal. should be when you go all the way to here. That's the only uh, place you should do the octave. So it's a personal choice. Someone will say the lower finger should be the leading. Uh, that 
people will say no the top finger should be I mean the pinky should be but uh, if you ask me this place is completely and third finger and then switch to first and fourth because it's too short space and my fingers is pretty extended It's actually no. to see you though so in this particular part the quality of sound will come not from pressing the tone when you go uh, no that's uh, very much wrong as the composer states very clearly largamente molto expressivo is not in fortissimo but in forte so the only accent is here when acoustic comes from the other string, right? Oh, definitely. I will definitely will go to the barber. Definitely. Uh, uh, that's something that I've been thinking for a while now. Yeah. And it's in G string, so... The opposite, I'm, I'm playing on G string, but you can hear A here. So that's what we call, that's what we call, yes. <laughs> that's what we call quality of sound. The quality of sound is not that you have to force your violin to extend that you change even the tone becomes sharper or lower. Um, it's not even the sultana. It's the consistency of this axial tone sound of you hearing the overtones, or we also call this tartini tones, right? And you, you and that's why this is one of very challenging concert. We say, oh, it's a simple Max Brook, yeah, but it's with an open string. <laughs> And once in a sudden you see the bow start vibrating, shaking, you got the shakes. Why? It is because 
it's a consistency of a pressure and speed. this lyrical moment you know where this uh, moment comes and the composer made it so sweet and it says solo molto expressivo and it's not even in forte. This is actually in mezzo forte. You would not even believe, right? So. No. So it's a poco crescendo to forte no more. major and it starts from B flat right and then we go transitioning so it's uh, it goes to E flat you know string change 
change on the A. E. to continue, continuously uh, f flip and continue to project as a soft, deep and mellow sound that is kind of broad, it kind of takes you out in the space, right? And those are the quality of sound that I'm talking on. It should be short and very precise trill. This is too high. So I, that's the correct tone. So the, the the danger the dangerosity the 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 danger part is where uh, when you do the trills often we go too high in uh, tone pitch. No. This is almost like a harmonic. You can almost do that. Change the timbre, change the voice, change the register, the emotion. And it says molto expressivo. So from you know un poco più lento, which is mean kinda of, sort of you have to go slower. You know, poco, a little slower, you know. Like not dragging, but take it back. You know, chill out. From this moment, you know. And written, uh, written down. And from here is, uh, you know, Pulento.
So, and we got it. Um, just uh, emphasis put the emphasis on the quality of sound and then everything goes to in this very uh, emotional and to where it's allegro moderato we are going back to reprise you know <laughs> a little modified but in usually that's you know what it is says it's ad libitum, solo ad libitum. As I said, if we don't hear the overtones, the overtones, it's something that we don't do right. Do I hear it? You know, 
the vibrato should not be leaning toward, it's just going to be this time on the back. From not It's a big uh, transition. stretch too much fingers. Fingers should not be stretched too much. It says as an open, uh, you know, a harmonic, but it says also as a third finger, so... So what defines the quality of sound? What? The quality of sound does not mean more pressure or less pressure. It's mean where exactly is pointing and putting your fingers to the right spot to where you can hear all the colors and over tones a tone can project. Your instrument can give you out. You see? If I do it a little higher, it's still G, but it's not... Is it sound clear, crisp and deep, like uh, going into space like free, like this? No. So this one is the correct one. The previous? No. Yes, so I wish all of you the best and wonderful rest of the day and hope to see you again. Bye now!